All right. Well, our next question was sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from Paul in Liverpool, the United Kingdom. He's a Liverpoolian. I recently listened to an interview with Arn Anderson where he talked about his payoffs. He said the biggest payoff he ever received was $12,500 whilst working for Crockett, although he stated he was promised $25,000. He also said he never received the amounts the guys at the top were getting paid. This surprised me, as Arn was one of the top guys at the time, I thought he would have made much more. I'd also be interested in Jim's thoughts on this and how it compares to the payoffs the Midnight Express received around the same time. Well, yeah, we've now we're we're we got some heat started here because the best payoff we ever got for from Crockett was ten grand a piece instead of twelve five. Um, I I don't it, Crockett never promised anybody any amount of money. So when Arn says he was promised, I think I know what it might be because before the Great American bashes. Um, in 86, the first series of tours, Flair had said, had been telling all the, at least all the heels in our locker room, it's going to be like 12 Starcades. And we had for Starcade 85, we got five grand a piece because we weren't the feature match. So we thought, okay, we'll take 12 of those. That's 60 grand. Well, it didn't turn out to be 12 Starcades. As I've, I've publicized and I printed it in the book, we made about 23 grand that month instead of 60. Um, so that may be what he's thinking about. I, we were never promised any amount of money beforehand, but for obvious reasons, because just in case Crockett didn't want to fucking back himself into a position, we were given guarantees with guarantees per year, but not per show. Um, having said that, I'd like to know what he got 12, five on when we only got 10 grand for the fucking scaffold. Cause Arn was not on time. <laughs> Starcade 86 was the biggest show they ever did, and we were uh, way on top of Arn on that one. Um, How do you think the payoffs were for the war games that summer in 87? Well, but it was not for any individual show. As a matter of fact, you know what? Arn may have been thinking about the check that he got for the bashes in 86, which were paid all at the same time, as we've talked about many times, because that's when... Ole and Arn worked with the rock and roll primarily, but the Midnight and I were with the Road Warriors and Baby Doll, Dusty and Magnum and Baby Doll. If we had that, we were a, a main event on some of the Bash shows and higher on the cards than Ole and Arn at that point. That's why Ole said in uh, Huntington that time, so, well, I never thought I'd be in a business long enough to see a fat manager and some dumb cunt make more money than me. And that's why I said, on behalf of the dumb cunt, the fat manager would like to thank you for blazing the trail and allowing this to happen is when I got over with Ole, but that may be what he got for the 86 bashes. Cause here's the thing with, with before pay-per-view, there was no way for an individual show for you to make payoffs like the, that the pay-per-view payoffs were, unless you were the NWA champion or fucking in the absolute main event of, you know, there were, there've been a number of times that guys that, like uh, uh, Flair and Kerry did 400 grand. They got 20 grand or better from a house show without pay-per-view, but those were few and far between. Um, So I don't know of any individual event that Crockett ran that Arn Anderson would have got $12,500 on. But having said that, a lot of people forget that Arn, even though he came in in 85, Arn was the TV champion. Arn was a member of the Four Horsemen, but Arn was the utility guy because he was not only the the worker worker and workhorse, but the guy you could beat in the Horsemen and not be beaten Flair because you can't beat Flair and not be beaten Luger because he's the giant and he doesn't know how to work, so you can't beat him. And, you know, whatever. Arn was in a lot of singles. Arn and Tully didn't get together as a regular tag team until 87. So Arn was was in the Horseman and was so good and such a talent and in, in all the angles, but he didn't make what Flair made. He didn't make what the Road Warriors made. He didn't make what Luger and Sting made. We didn't make what fucking Luger and Sting and the Road Warriors made. And to be quite honest, 
Midnight Express may have out, not outdrawn the Road Warriors, but we sure as fuck outdrew Luger and Sting there during that period. Uh, but they were paying them for what they thought their future contribution would be. So it's not hard to believe that that Arn was not in the top money makers in Crockett Promotions. And then we just talked about this last week. When we renegotiated our contracts, me and the Midnight Express, Tully and Arn were still in that process. And those renegotiations for new contracts got cut off when Crockett realized that he was in financial trouble. Ours had already gone to the point of no return. So that fall when uh, they started paying, TBS started paying on Crockett's contracts, uh, you know, if Arn had got a new one, he would have he would have at least got fucking well, no, because they left. Goddamn, they left because <laughs> they quit in September and went to the WWF right before Turner started paying on those guarantees uh, equal amounts every two weeks. And then when he came back, he was promised two hundred and fifty thousand. He and Tully both, but when Heard fucked Tully around, Heard also cut Arn to one hundred and fifty thousand because he wasn't as valuable with, without his partner. Maybe the that's what it that was. The partner that wouldn't fucking bring in. So maybe that was... Maybe this, that's the confusion, because the guy said 12500 but he was promised 25000 Maybe he left well, off no, a zero no, because, on those. Well, no, he phrased that, though, working for Crockett, the most he ever made. I don't know. Point is, a lot of guys didn't keep their records I did. 